Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to Light Channel Denmark. Today we are uh, so blessed again having Jonathan Gray with us from New Zealand and we have also Norwegian Elin Berglund with us living in Denmark. Uh, both of them have uh, been with us here at Light Channel several times before. Uh, they are very much into archaeology, both of them. And both of them has been at uh, the site of Nova's Ark several times and done studies. And uh, last time we had Jonathan with us, uh, we were asking a um, question here. Um, if I can have this uh, PowerPoint up. Why the world will never accept Nova's Ark? And we were talking about that today, sorry to say, People, they don't want to have anything to do with God. They want to live their own life. And they don't think about that one day they have to stand before God in the judgment. And uh, we hope and pray that uh, those who uh, maybe are skeptical to um, all these archaeological findings, that they will really see through these programs that they are true and that we can trust in the Lord. On the PowerPoint here, we can see that um, if you if you see actually a picture, a, a, a map of um, Turkey, we can see that um, Noah's Ark was landing on the Ararat Mountains, and that is very very close to the border of Iran. And so you see this little water on the right side there. That is where the um, Noah's Ark landed. And to the right is Iran. So when you stand there at Noah's Ark, you can actually look over to the border of Iran. So, um, and the mountain range when Noah's Ark first landed is about 7,000 feet high. And Noah's Ark present location is about 6,000 feet approximately. We know that uh, from Noah went into the ark and when he went out again was one year and 17 days. And um, on the next slide we can uh, read in Genesis 8.4 uh, and the boat and then the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventh day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And we can read in uh, Ellen White's the, over Prophet's book, the waters had been 15 cubits above the highest mountains. The Lord remembered Noah, and as the waters de decreased, he caused the ark to rest upon the top of a cluster of mountains, which God in his power had preserved and made them to stand fast all through the violent storm. So here we can see that the boat was landing not on one mountain, but on a cluster of mountains. And uh, isn't it interesting that it's not only in the Bible that it's talked about Noah's Ark. The biblical history of Noah and the flood is the most widely spoken of events in the Raquel memory of mankind. And from uh, one of um, um, Jonathan Gray's books, we can actually read more about this. And I will, uh, I will encourage you to go to his website if you would like to have some of his book and study more about this. Uh, we can uh, see on the next slide that um, there is a common agreement among flood legions on numerous points, even after allowing for the ultimate embellishment with local color and culture. The similarity factor between these legions remains remarkably high. And here are some. In 88% of the story, we can see that, the that uh, there is talked about a um, favored family. And we can see that in almost every tradition, they are talking about that uh, who were 
for, that they were forewarned. We can see that survival due to the boat, animals also saved, the flood being worldwide, and the survivors ending up on the mountain, 57%. So we can see that in many places, they're actually talking about Noah's Ark. So today we are going to have more critical questions answered by um, Jonathan Gray and Elin. So let's pray. Yes, Father in heaven, we are so grateful, Lord, that you love us with an everlasting love. We know that uh, you love us, you are, um, have given our lives to you, and we know that you just as much love all those who are skeptical or those honest atheists. And we pray, Lord, that you will uh, open our hearts so that we can see that the Bible is true. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have allowed in these days, last days, that uh, Jonathan, that Ron Wyatt was finding Noah's Ark and that Jonathan Gray could do and all the research he was doing. And uh, we know, Lord, that you are soon coming back. And I pray that you will help us all, Lord, to find a friend in you and a savior in you. I pray that you will uh, come now with your Holy Spirit and bless the program, bless uh, uh, Elin and Jonathan and Mikael. And I pray, Lord, that you will be with all the viewers and bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Eva, for the introduction. And thank you, all our viewers, for joining us here on Light Channel in Denmark. Tonight, we will continue our series entitled The Supernatural Discoveries, Miracles, and Enemies with our seventh episode. And tonight's episode is actually a special edition that we have decided to do upon a special request from one of our viewers. And the question that was related to tonight's episode is that why there are different locations where at least a lot of, obviously there is a lot of confusion about the location of Noah's Ark. We have some experts, some archaeologists, which are claiming to have located Noah's Ark in Turkey and some other location. But before we go there, let me introduce again, Jonathan, welcome again from New Zealand, live. Thank you, Mark, to be with you. All right, and uh, again, as Eva mentioned, we have uh, Elin, and you're actually in Denmark right now. That's correct, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. so welcome. Elin, you have also a background in this research when we're talking about Noah Sark. That's the conversation tonight. Could you just spend a couple of minutes and explain our viewers, what is your background to be part of this conversation and about Noah's Ark? Oh, it's difficult to do, uh, make a long story <laughs> short, but uh, I got interested in this at the beginning of the 90s 
and I got to know uh, Ron Wyatt. And uh, after that, and uh, specifically about Noah's Ark, I went up there in 2000. And later on, I took tour groups up there for many, many years. And um, well, I also went to uh, Armenia to have a look there because I heard there were many who found interesting things over there. All right. And uh, I like to see that myself and do some research. Okay. Well, as I mentioned uh, before, the episode tonight is a special edition entitled The Location of Noah Sark. And tonight we're going to focus on two major locations, which uh, some archaeologists are claiming that it's either in Turkey, top of the mountain Ararat, or the other location where Jonathan and uh, uh, Eileen and Ron White has been uh, showing so far for many years now, or is that Armenia? And I know there is also a claims that Nuasar could be located in Iran. Well, before we go there, I have a, just a couple of information here just for our viewers, which I'm going to put on the screen here. This is uh, coming from National Geographic, and this is an article that we had on our presentation before, it's from April 2010, where the National Geographic writes on their website that a team of evangelical Christians, explorers, cl claims they found the remains of Noah's Ark beneath the snow and volcanic debris on Turkey's Mount Ararat. And that is on top of the mountain. Is that correct, Jonathan? This is... The, 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 this is what they're claiming, yes. Yes, this is what they claim, right. So, so there has been done a lot of research, as you know, and you have been explaining before, on top of the mountain. And Jonathan, could you just explain again why some researchers are looking on the top of the mountain and not in other locations? Well, I think people loosely read the scripture, which talks about the... the the Ararat is mentioned in the English. Yeah. And Ararat actually is a kingdom, not a mountain in, mm -hmm. in the Bible. Uh, the, I do have a, a, pic, a map up there which Uratu as being the kingdom of Uratu. Yeah. And Ararat actually is an anglicized form of Uratu. And what the Bible is really saying is that the ark landed in the mountains of, in the kingdom of Uratu. It doesn't mm. give you a mountain uh, uh, by name. And the fact is that history, Mount Ararat, where the claims are now being made, did not exist at the mm -hmm. end of the flood. Mount Ararat came up as a volcano hundreds of years later. And if the ark landed there, of course, spot, it would have been destroyed by the volcano. But uh, we know that this is not so because the mountain did not exist uh, at the time when uh, the flood was taking place. Okay, that, that's a very important information, and I, if I may use this term, I think you nailed it. <laughs> and I don't know, Eileen, if you have uh, some other comment on this. I, isn't that the main confusion? Because people take the wrong, the wrong start point. Because th the assumption is that we have to look in the mountains of Ararat, and that's it. Mm. And, and because yes. of that, they're actually looking at the wrong places, that have the wrong assumptions. Yeah. yeah, so this mountain is not called Ararat. Uh, it's only the Westerners who called uh, this mountain Ararat, the volcano that mm. Jonathan is talking about. The mountain uh, is called something else, both in Armenian and in Turkish. Okay. And so uh, we have just given it the name because it's so big, so it's suitable. But even so, this uh, the, the people you mentioned that said they found it in 2010, the Chinese group, it has been uh, revealed as a scam. Mm -hmm. And people yes. have admitted they have taken woods up there. So. Just to make it a scam. And it's interesting that National Geographic are actually not making a disclaimer on, at least on this article. Well, there is another, uh, if you go online here, you can see Bible History Daily. They also made an article explaining here, uh, where again, still another group looking for uh, Mount Ararat. And, and they say where the Bible says Noah landed but then they, uh, after the flood. But then they say this group 
It's looking to confirm the tradition nearby Mount Kudi, okay, uh, and that's Degi, I think that's the Turkish name, which is really Mount Ararat as recorded in the Quran, Surah, I think that's 31 verse 44. And this is a little bit confusing for me because the article starts saying that there is a group of people looking for Mount Ararat where they believe that the uh, ark landed after the flood, but then they use the Quran. So I, I don't understand. Either they use the Bible or the Quran, because obviously, as I'm reading here, the Quran mentions another location, or is that correct? Any? Do you have any yeah. knowledge on this? Yeah, yes, the, the, the Quran does mention another mountain, Kudi, but Kudi is, is, the, is the site where our, our boat has been found. Mm -hmm. uh, the Quran is in its identification of the location, and, and it's not what people call Mount Ararat today. It is Mount Kudi, actually, is the area of the ark did land, and uh, both the Bible and the Quran are, are in agreement on this point. The Bible says in the mountains of the kingdom of Aratu, mm -hmm. and the Quran gives the name of the mountain in particular where it was. Right. I, I can confirm that because I've been in, in Iran on the other side, and they, they in Iran, they call this place uh, the same mountain, Mount Kudi. All right. Okay. Well, I have this book here. It's uh, the, in his book, The Ark Before Noah, decoding the story of the flood. Irving Finkel, the British Museum, discusses three mountains that have flood stories affiliated. The first and most famous bears the name, bears the name Mount Ararat, Agridog. The highest peak in its region, Mount Ararat, is a dormant volcano located in eastern Turkey near the border with Iran and Armenia. The second is Mount Kudi, and the third is Mount Nisir, Pir Omar Gudrun, where the Ark rested according to the Gilgamesh epic. And this is uh, uh, the drawing of the map uh, with these uh, three mountains. There is a link here, um, it was on the previous slide, if people want to see more about this, this is the link. You can go in and see more information about this. But what is important here, uh, Jonathan and Ilin, is this, uh, look, well, it's within the, uh, the Ararat, but we have three locations here, all right? There, there are three locations mentioned here in, uh, in this book here. So one is Agri Dog. This, uh, that's the highest peak, and that's, I believe, that's the top of Mount Ararat. Is that correct? Correct, yes. All right. Okay, the second one is, let me find it here, near the border with uh, Iran and Armenia. That's Mount Kudi. And the third one is Mount Nisir. And is, is there a contradiction between the Gilgamesh epic and what the Bible is saying here? Actually, uh, they're just, it's just one's giving the actual mountain and one's giving the area uh, which contains that mountain. All right. Okay. That's, that's a very important. So, because as I see here, again, the confusion is that people believe that Gilgamesh, it's actually referring to the mountain and not to the area as the Bible. So, the Bible is referring to the area where the ark is located. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, and, just, and, I, and I can uh, say in, in old maps, you can see this name was still there, but Turks have changed a lot of names mm -hmm. in the Kurdish areas. But you could see the name before at old maps. Nisir uh, that is correct. Yeah, in the old Turkish maps you're thinking of. Mm. All right. Okay. Yes. Well, one of the last articles I want to bring here to our viewers and for our conversation is this one here from uh, CBN Christian Broadcasting Network, International Christian Broadcasting. They did this article here, where is uh, Noah's Ark? And uh, they also go in and, um, in my view, bring some confusion in regards because they do go through all these different explanation. They do also mention Ron Wyatt, but they conclude that none of them are really correct. <laughs> so obviously they have made a decision not to take parties or I don't know what is their motive, but they conclude that actually we don't know where Noah's Ark is today. This is a, a recent 
article, I, I think it was from 2018, I'm not sure, from a Christian uh, Broadcasting Network. So the reason I'm taking this up is just to show our viewers that obviously, even within the Christian community, uh, a lot of Christians, archaeologists and Christian groups, they are not in agreement. They are in very much in disagreement. And this is the main conversation tonight. Obviously, the location is the main issue here. This is what I understand. Is that correct, Jonathan? Yes, yeah, correct. It's interesting to note, uh, Michael, that uh, there never used to be confusion in the past. Uh, there was total agreement right through history. It's only in modern times that this confusion has, has started to take place. All right. Okay. So, Elin, um what is uh, the background of uh, this Josephus claim here? Could you please, because now we're moving into more into the Armenian uh, description where there is a group of people that believes that probably Noah Sarek landed in Armenia, but is there any evidence that is that so? Well, at one time, the whole area was called, after Urartu, it was called Armenia. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they caused all these cool places before the Tur Turks came it was Armenia okay. Turkey is, is, is a modern name but Armenia is an yeah. older name that covered that same area mm -hmm. yeah okay so we shouldn't now be Armenia is just a little country behind there but before Armenia was bigger okay uh, a larger part of, uh, of Turkey all right Okay, so this is what Joseph is also is, uh, is, is saying here, right? Mm. Okay. Yes. That is right. <laughs> okay, however, the Armenians call this place Apobaterion, the place of descent. Is that, is that a word, uh, Jonathan, descent or? Descent, that's right. Yeah, all right, okay. Well, Berossus, also spelled Berossus or Berossus here. It's a Chaldean priest of Bel in Babylon. Could you explain about this, uh, Elin? Yes, what's interesting, most of his uh, scripture has uh, disappeared, but there is a lot of other writers, uh, also Josephus, that has brought the things he has written and we've written it in their work. And uh, what's interesting about Barossus is that he says that this was uh, Noah's Ark. Uh, he lived around 300 years before Christ. And he says at his time, they could go and see it. Mm -hmm. They went up there as a pilgrimage and they took some bitumen and they, with them has uh, amulets and, and things. So at that time, they could still see the Ark. And some people say that um, it had disappeared. Of course, Noah used it for um, building, uh, <clears throat> used it for house or and furniture. But uh, this people says that it was still there at that time, so it they could it could be seen. Mm. All right. Now I, I just want to ask you a question, Eileen. Uh, from the very beginning, when you started to do your research about Noah Sarik, why did you do it in the first place? I always been interesting interested in, in prove the Bible is true because so many people, you know, they are atheists today. They grow up as atheists, not mm. to be, believe what is in the Bible. So I, I was so happy to see everything they dig up to find that the Bible is true. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of things that prove that. So when I heard about Noah's Ark, I was thinking that is so good to use, to evangelize, to mm -hmm. reach people with the gospel. Mm. So if this is true, I want to know. All right. That was my main. <laughs> Your main. Goal. Because I want to share it. Mm. Yeah. And I believe you have the same goal, Jonathan, or similar. Absolutely. Uh, for years, I, I lived among atheists and and people who were unbelievers, and uh, I could see everything from their perspective. And when the evidence uh, became within reach. I decided that these are I want to reach. And all so right. that's where so my ministry has been reaching unbelievers hmm. but, with the truth. Yeah. All right. Now in a way that they can see makes sense. Hmm. 
Because yes. you mentioned yes. this uh, very important word, we, we're talking about here, not just, this is not just a Bible story. It's not just because we want to make sure that everybody believes the way we do, but you mentioned evidence. So, Eileen, when you did your research on Noah's Ark, on the location, were you absolutely sure that that was the location in Turkey when you started? Or did you start to look at the evidence? Could it be or could it not be? Maybe it's in another place. So what convinced you that that was the right location? Well, besides reading all this research that has been done, uh, I was up there. I think Jonathan was there at the same time when they did some uh, measurement to see if this uh, metal readings uh, was regular, that it was a regular pattern. When I saw this, uh, I, I think that convinced me really to see, you know, if you could just mark it. Uh, I, I don't know how much it was between each one, but it was a regular pattern all over the ship. And I was back there late uh, years later with a Danish television station that uh, came with us. Uh, and uh, some of the boys there, they were skeptic, very skeptic. And when I saw this regular pattern, because we used also to do some um, uh, measurement when they were there, mm. uh, and they say, well, this is so convincing. And I yeah. said, of course, you have to measure outside the arc also to see <laughs> if it is mm. regular patterns there, something is wrong. So they went outside and do the same research, and I saw there was nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Well, so Jenna, that, to me, that yeah. was very special. Okay. Okay, and we'll get back to to that uh, in a second. Jonathan, uh, uh, everything started with, uh, well, at least according to this location, everything started with this uh, picture from uh, September 1960 here. Could you just shortly explain what is this picture basically showing? Yes, I, I took Turkish Force pilot actually was commissioned to fly over the mountains of eastern Turkey facing the the Russian, uh, the Russian Empire, the USSR, yeah. because the Turkey Russians might be moving missiles secretly into Turkey, uh, and they wanted to know what was going on. And mm -hmm. this pilot was taking photographs of the mountain areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and when this particular photograph was examined, uh, it was examined by Dr. Brandenburger of Ohio State University, USA, and I have never seen a picture like this in my life. And he was an expert in this. And this is why he was given the job of, of examining these photos. Mm. He said, this is a boat. It has to be examined. It is a boat. Yeah. This is a closer look at, at the same picture. That's it. Yeah. Well, as per today, we have uh, certain groups and experts and archaeologists that are making the claim that this picture here, this very picture we, we have on the screen here, it's a natural formation. Well, yes, a, a, a Vandenberg expedition was one of the, the first came to this area. So the announcement was made in Life magazine, hmm. the picture you've just seen. They came to examine it and uh, they, uh, they saw only stone. Hmm. And they didn't realize that wood can turn to stone. And that this is a normal process. Mm. And it doesn't take a long time for it to happen. And, uh, the, the, of course, we know the, the, the timber, the wood of the ark, uh, would not be much wood because the, the, uh, the molecules of uh, would be rotting away and replaced by the, the stone that uh, took their place. And... Stone, uh, they blasted a hole in the side, which archaeologists really should not do, hmm. and then they, they came out with pieces of, of sand and rock, and uh, they said, oh, this is just natural, so they went away and forgot about it. Hmm. So, Elin, you, were, um, you have sent me these uh, images, which I understand is from uh, Armenia. Could you please explain our viewers what is the story behind this? Well, this is on the top of a mountain called Urtazar. Uh, and um, there is some archaeologists that have said that this is the place where most they have uh, no clue, no facts, nothing. Mm. Uh, it's just based upon a lot of uh, rock inscription they found up there. 
uh, it, it's a lot of rock inscriptions, and they say on the film that this is the only place where this could be found in the Armenia, but it's not. It's another place also you can find it. But it's very interesting to see. It's very, very old, and you can see animals, a lot of animals on these stones. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see lions, and they told me, the people who live up there uh, close to, that they found a skeleton of a lion. Mm. Um, yeah, here's the, some picture from uh, from uh, these inscriptions. You can find they found the skeleton of a lion up there. Mm. And uh, what is really interesting is that, of course, at that time there were lions in this area after the flood, uh, and a lot of other animals uh, that they now can find the skeletons of. It was all over Armenia, um, animals that then doesn't exist today, and that's mm. a natural explanation that there was these animals after the flood. But it doesn't say anything that this is the place where Noah's Ark landed. Mm -hmm. um, has nothing to do with it. And as you can see, this little figure down here at the right side is a little figure of a man with six fingers and a bird's head. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was an idol in Egypt. His name was Tooth. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a little later than uh, the Ark of Noah. Mm. And this Im this uh, image has been found in the same location as the other ones, with the this yeah, image. Yeah, yeah. There is the thousands of them. Thousands mm -hmm. of them. People have been sitting up there watching their sheep, maybe, and uh, made these drawings. But also, uh, the, who said that this is the place the ark landed? They have mm -hmm. they have nothing. Mm -hmm. They say okay. it's a mountain range, but there's a lot of mountain range. And, mm. But they found they, they don't find uh, any evidence of uh, any ship up there. Nothing. All right. So this is a map of, of the area here around. Yeah. Metz, yeah. Uh, Metzamor is another place. That's a star observation place. And it's a, it's a ruins from a very big city. But mm. Ugtasa, the place we saw, is very close to another place called Soraz Karer, close to Sisyan, a town in Armenia. Mm. And so they say that uh, uh, Shem and uh, everybody came out from the ark, they went down and built Soraz Karer. Mm. Uh, but they have no evidence of that either. <laughs> they say mm. it's a star observatory, but there are, there are no evidence of that either. But some people think so because it's holding the stones. Mm. What it is that we know it is, is that it's it's graves they are found uh, tombs there so uh, some people think that it has uh, been uh, graves for all people and that might be shem or others that they that they uh, hmm. buried how, there we don't know really how, how far is this area in armenia from the location where ron Wyatt and you are saying that the ark is the remains of ark of the ark is how far I away don't know is the that? exactly measurement, but it's, but it's not very far. You mm. see uh, on the picture here, you can see Ararat, can you? Mm. Where the, yeah. there's a, you can see it's a volcano with all the lava around and yeah. a white yeah. top, that's mm. Ararat. Okay. And uh, you can see a little yellow mark there mm. on the, on the down from the mountain. There, that's where uh, we believe the remains of Noah's Ark is. Yeah. And uh, Armenia is in the other side of Ararat. And uh, I don't think it's on the map. Yeah, it's it's, it's right there. on the right corner. There is a little yeah. yellow dot. So mm -hmm. it's in the same area, you can say. And the first mm -hmm. people after the flood, I guess they uh, they were around these places first before they went east. From so east. there, there is a possibility that they've just walked to and spread around the area. Yes, because this is the first civilization they we have okay. and uh, it was very early civilization up yeah. there and uh, and it was warmer climate on the other side of the Ararat so I believe that's very natural that's where they went okay have have you done any study on this uh, Jonathan on the Armenian side yeah it, uh, I haven't specialized on the Armenian side because the kingdom of Baratu actually did not go into that particular area. It stayed within what is today still within the borders of where Turkey is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is a picture of the kingdom of Baratu. 
Kingdom uh, of Aratu was specified in the Bible. Yeah. Landed in the middle of Aratu. All right. Okay. Well, if we could uh, move on to uh, the next uh, topic here in our uh, conversation tonight here. The next topic is not just about the location, but it seems also that there is a confusion about the size of, of Noah's Ark. Uh, and if I uh, can take this image up here, actually this one here, uh, the Ark was five states in length by two states in uh, breadth. And I have here um, the Bible verse from Genesis uh, chapter 6, 15. God gave Noah the dimension for the ark in cubits. And this is how he shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height and 30 cubits. Well, the question is, uh, Jonathan, is that why is there even a confusion? Because as I understand, you and Ron Wyatt and you, Elin, you're not the only ones that have done the measurements on Noah Sarik and the measurements fit fits. Is that correct? Jonathan? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they do precisely. Hmm. Now, um, the, the the confusion is in misunderstanding uh, what the, if that slide can come up again. Five five stages by two stages. Now, this was actually the writing of Barossus. Man, mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. uh, who, who went up to the area. Now, this actually is the confusion, that the ark was five stages in length and two in breadth. Now, a mm. the old stage measurements were 600 feet. And if we were to, to say that the ark was, was measured uh, five stages, it would make it much, much longer, 3,000 feet long. Hmm. And by two stages, it uh, would be a uh, of that. Uh, uh, people who've read Barossus on this have misunderstood what he's talking about. Hmm. Uh, and this confused me at first, too. I thought he was talking about the size of the ark, but he was not talking about the size of the ark. If he was talking about the size of the ark, uh, he he would be so the ark was eighty times bigger hmm. than it really was, yeah. and that would be nonsense. Hmm. Uh, the deck area of the ark is uh, in. We take this to be the size is eighty times too big. In other hmm. words, you'd have to put eighty arcs in, into the ark size of Barossus. That's impossible. Uh, no boat has ever been made. Uh, as big as that. Hmm. Now, uh, what he is saying actually is something different. If we are, if we understand him, and I'll, I'll prove this in a moment, he is talking about the location of the ark. Where is the ark? Which, of course, fits in with our earlier part of our discussion. Hmm. Now, today, uh, we measure our locations on the earth. Uh, by what we call the prime meridian. It's an imaginary divide that runs through north to south. Mm. And uh, today's prime meridian runs through Greenwich in England. But in Barossa's mm. day, uh, the Chaldeans considered the world divided by their prime meridian, mm. which still went through uh, the world naval, as they call it, which still uh, was marked by Darius's tomb. Just west of the city of Persepolis. Now, in a nutshell, Barossa's puzzle was when you decode it, is saying this. You aim, he's talking about it in his writings, you aim in the land of the Kurds, you, you point in that direction, draw a right angle out from the Persian prime meridian, where Barossa's tomb is, and then you let this line extend out for a length of the arc, you draw a line to fifth angle of the first line and let it intersect the first <coughs> There is evidence that map makers as early as 2000 BC understood and used the principles of longitude and latitude. Hmm. Our current system comes from ancient Babylon, so they knew how to do this. And 
So Barossa said the arc was five stades by two stades. He's really yeah. saying is that uh, you, you, you measure a distance of five in one direction and you measure a distance in the other direction and you a triangle. Uh, the Egyptians did this all the time. Triangular uh, measurements of locations on the earth. And uh, Barossus, actually, they used right angle triangles also when they wanted to uh, locate something, and they would describe it that way. Hmm. You, go five, you go five stages this direction in length, you go two stages that direction, and when the two of them intersect on a triangle, you have the intersection point, that is where the arc will be. So what Barossus trying to to just give a geographical location of where the ark could be found. He was not giving exaggerated size for the ark. He was giving a scientific uh, intersection of where to find the ark. Hmm. All right. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Well, if we move back again to you, Alien, and to the Armenian side here. I Sorry, I, I'm, I'm so, so, sorry. Before we go off that subject, may, right. maybe I should just finish Sh what, what sure. I, was, I was saying. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, a right angle triangle going from the right tomb and the prime meridian. Uh, if you if you go uh, distance there, you will find that the arc uh, is precisely at the intersection point uh, my, my version of of the of his puzzle Barossa's statement is that uh, well, well you, you can't any number of intersection points actually if you uh, if you do uh, that but, but what he's he's saying is uh, there has to be a third and determined to the inter intellection point. So he says in length. So he just doesn't say five stages. Mm. He says stages in length. Now, the arc was five stages in length. It's the missing clue. Mm. And the first line we draw for a, a degree angle, triangle, uh, you do the five factor. The five factor is also this length. Hmm. Now, it's interesting, if you take the arc's length, 515 feet, and, and you, uh, you then draw an angle of, of shifts out to make the triangle, give you the actual spot where the arc is. Hmm. So hmm. the 515 feet is 515 minutes of an arc on a global, global map. Now... Uh, the arc's length is the clue to its intersection point. And so according to Barossa's figure, the arc would be 515 minutes of arc west of Persepolis, that is uh, the line of, of Darius. It would be intersecting the line of, of two-fifths of the right, right angle. The wrong uh, in, is 90 degrees, two-fifths of that is 36 degrees so you take the 90 degree angle that's the the, the the five ratio you intersect it with the two ratio which is 30 degrees 36 degrees being two fifths of 90 and, and the length of the uh, you take the length of the arc as, as the intersection point and there you will have noah's arc now i measured those directions going from persepolis on the map, uh, and then going up at an angle of um, 36 degrees against the, the 90 degrees, and for a, just 515 uh, points. And when I got to that spot, I found myself standing beside the ark that Ron Wyatt discovered. Uh, the, the clues of Barossus certainly are, are, are clues which gave me the evidence that Barossus was telling us where the ark is. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, that's where it is, right there beside the, uh, 
beside the spot where you will stand. And so my my explanation of Barossa's puzzle is if the deluge boat, the ark boat you wish to view, take its length as five and cross by two. All right. Well, um, I don't know if there is anything to add to this. How, how... <laughs> Jonathan, I've I have to do my own calculation. It's not because I don't trust you, <laughs> but this is very. I, I I guess you've 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 done this calculation how many times? Just to oh, lots of times. Yeah. Yes. Just to make sure that you've got it right. Okay. Yes. Uh, if if Barosas is not talking about the size, obviously he can't be talking about the size because we we know. Know how 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 their measurements were, and it would be 80 times bigger for deck space than, and that's impossible. Barossus was not a madman; he knew what he was doing. He was a scientist, and, and uh, into the spot. And so when he says you you cross by the two of the five, and that and then you you incorporate the length of the arc going out mm. from the five, uh, there's no doubt that he's talking about the location, not the size. Hmm. So this is where you ended. Is that you in the picture? That's me in the picture, just there where Barossa said the intersection point was. Oh, that's very, very interesting. Okay. Well, if I can move over to Eileen again and, and ask you about the next uh, picture here, the next images here. Do we have anything here that points us to Noah Sarik? Are we still on the Armenian side here, Ellen? Yes, I'm a little occupied by the Armenian question. Uh, uh, but it's just, you know, to say that um, there is other places with the same uh, stone inscriptions, the ancient mm -hmm. stone pictograph inscriptions. And that that is in, on the this place that is closer to Lake Sevan. It's called Gekhama. Mm -hmm. It's a mountain range, and also, and they found a lot of the same type of inscriptions. So there was someone saying on the film that Utasa uh, was the only place in Armenia with those kind of stones, but that's not true. All right. Okay. And the next image here is showing the highest mountain. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's also. I think it's important. And some, uh, I, I know that uh, the archaeology, very famous one, uh, Bill Shea, William Shea, he was looking for the ark uh, here in the Armenian highest mountain, Aragats. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't find anything here either. So, um, okay. There's nothing to find here. And like Jonathan says, you know, it's not in the ancient Armenia or ancient Urartu. And that's where the Bible says it landed. So why go further north, even if it's Armenia today? It was not Armenia at that time. Hmm. So it will be wrong to look at these places. Okay. Jonathan, is there any other evidence here? Is there any local folklore? As I understand from your uh, from your, one of your book, one of your greatest book, question and answers, uh, is there any local folklore about Noah Sarik? in that location in Turkey? No, actually, uh, Michael, it is not. Back there in 1915 to 1917, the original inhabitants of the region were attacked and completely removed from the area by other people who came in and replaced them. Mm -hmm. And all the, all the original inhabitants and all the folklore went with them. It was lost. And it was a bloody and devastating massacre. And, mil and so many of them were killed. However, the people who moved in, uh, being tribal and uh, used to communications with any neighbours, just as they are today, they had no knowledge of the history or the folklore of the region. Hmm. But they still knew some of the names that they moved into. And some of the names of various locations in the region still retain the connection with the Ark. Hmm. Uh, for example, you have the, oh, oh, as this picture shows here, 
in the on the uh, the first column, the Ararat region uh, is the is the uh, location, uh, and it's the Ararat region we are claiming the ark is. Hmm. On the mountains, plural in the book of Genesis, and so that's a mountain range, not just a single mountain on its own. Uh, on a hill, not a tall mountain, and Al Judy, the Al Judy slopes. Hmm. But uh, what I was going to was say was this that the debate, Doomsday Mountain, these names still remain, and hmm. the people who um, who moved in still keep the same mountains, but they had no idea where the names came from. They just said, "Well, these have been here when we are." All right. Okay. And there are some additional ones here. If you could do an explanation on this one as well. Yes. Now, now old traditions say that the, the boat landed on the west side of the mountain, and the boat is on the west side of the mountain. You go to the top of the mountain behind it, and you're looking eastward over to Iran. Hmm. The boat was on the west side. Uh, and besides rock, the, the old to the to te, to say it's beside a large rock. Well, yes, it is beside a large rock, and it's stuck on that rock too because as it as it slid down the mountain in the lava flow and the mud flow, uh, it was cr crashed against this rock, and that stopped it falling any further. And that rock actually has has uh, dented into the side of the ark on one side. And and kept it there. It, it's also uh, near a village called Nisur. And sure enough, the village today that's there uh, used to name Nisur. Now, uh, old traditions say that the ark was on a, a north axis, pointing north south. Mm -hmm. And it is actually very close to being north south. It's only ten degrees from a north south direction pointing. All right. Okay. So all the old traditions that describe the ark and location are all they all fit what we see today. Mm. Now I'm asking you both, Jonathan and Nilin, when you do archaeology research, how may how much evidence would you need to have an assurance about what you're researching? It's actually this is what it is. Is it one piece of evidence, two pieces, three pieces, if I may say so? Is it because you're looking for common sense or are you looking for a majority of archaeologists to agree upon one single piece of archaeology, if that's correct? What is your, not just background, but what is your level of assurance to make you personally sure that in this case, for example, this was Noah's Ark, Jonathan? If you understand my question, uh, I would, I, yeah. yes, I, I, I would not uh, be comfortable with just one piece of evidence. Mm. Uh, I want more and more and more and more and more and more, so that every time you go back, it increases. Nothing mm. will contradict that because mm. once you've discovered something, you, you can discover it. The fact mm. is, it's there. Just mm. as Elaine mentioned earlier, when you are. Um, uh, inside the, the structure, you find a pattern, a, a pattern of, of iron crisscrossing, and uh, uh, you find that pattern outside, only within the shape itself. And this pattern is a man-made pattern, a regular pattern. Every nine feet is particular crisscrossing of iron. Mm. Now, th that's man-made for sure. So first of all, it's a man-made object. Now, now, what is it? How long is it? Where is it? Um, uh, is it a boat or is it a, is it a temple or is it something else? And you have to evidence that keeps on adding and adding and more and more evidence. And only when you've got a great watertight uh, array of evidence, such as would up in a court of law, mm. uh, only then would I be comfortable. All right. Wow. Uh, I, I, I am a, 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 a uh, shall I say, I'm, I'm hung up on evidence. It has to be evidence, not speculation. Okay. What about you, Elin? Because I also understand you've done a lot of trips to this location in Turkey, to you know, Asarik. Oh, I will just say I'm so agree with Jonathan, mm. because uh, one or two or three is not enough. Mm. You have to find out, has somebody built this? 
uh, is it natural? And somebody say it's natural, you know, uh, and then they show the picture, you know, they have other uh, flows like mud flows that, you know, you have an obstacle and then you got the mud flow around and it will look the same. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, that sounds very, uh, <laughs> that was before I saw all the regular patterns. Mm. Uh, but I talked to a geologist up there. I think you know him, Sally Bayrak Tutan, and he says he, he had done research on that. There is no obstacle up there that could do this formation, that could make this formation, that you can find all the places. And the other places, they change all the time, he said. But this formation never changed. The area around change, but this structure is keeping together. So it's it's so many evidences that comes up, you know, and just uh, nail it, you know, say. Uh, but if there was some new question coming up that there is uh, an explanation that this could not be Noah's Ark, then we have to research again and again and again. I think uh, there's always you are always researching, but at mm. the point, of course, it it couldn't be anything else. Mm. Okay. Um, well, th that's where you, conclusion you have to take mm. at the end. The question was I also aimed to our viewers, which are probably confused. And and thank you for the question uh, to to you that actually asked this question in uh, I think it was the fifth episode. Uh, with, uh, with you, Jonathan, and ask this question, because there is a great confusion. And this is also a challenge for our viewers. To We ask you to look at the evidence, and this is what you're also doing, Jonathan. And you have done your own research for how many years? I know I asked you this question before, but you've, you've done your research. Yeah, 20, 27 years now. 27 years. And how many times did you go to this location? Oh, I've lost count. You've lost count. Okay, <laughs> so that's a lot of times. And uh, at, at, again, as we mentioned before, at this very point in time, there are two expeditions right now, Elin, at the location in Turkey, at the same location, right? Okay. Is, is there anything you can, you can say about two ex these two expeditions, Elin? right now in Turkey? Uh, I know they are working very hard with the authorities to get mm -hmm. uh, a digging permission now mm -hmm. from yeah. two different uh, 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 approaches. Sources, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. And what is their, their, their end goal, target? to What do they want to achieve? Because one it's an Australian and the other one it's an American expedition, as I understand. Um, yeah, both boats crossing a little. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's Americans in both of them, I guess. But uh, uh, they have done some scannings uh, recently, and those scannings confirms uh, where Ron Wyatt thought it were would be wood. You know mm. where the wood, uh, the the petrified wood would be, and um, all the scannings were very positive, and mm -hmm. you can it is factored easy to see this both after the scannings, but now they want to dig at those places and find petrified wood because this place, as far as I know, Jonathan, has never been never been any diggings there except these holes they have been into, but there have never been uh, an archaeological research digging in the place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and that's very difficult to get up there because there has been so much wars and mm -hmm. conflicts and and uh, yeah, it, it is quite difficult, uh, mm. but now they hope that they will get it. Mm. Okay, well, this is very interesting, and I can only say so far that uh, we are in contact with one of the expeditions at least, and at least we have been promised here as Light Channel to, to have uh, first-hand information as, as soon as they finish uh, the digging phase of uh, of the process and they have some uh, some lab data but so far as you have uh, informed us here tonight Eileen, they have already done some uh, uh, radar scanning and i believe yes. with the latest equipment do you have any of this uh, data available yet Mm, they are uh, yes. I don't think we have them here now, but they are uh, they are published. Yes, they're uh, already published. I, yeah, I mm. I think you know him from Australia or something, John Larson. You are you familiar with him, uh, Jonathan? He has done a lot of uh, scannings up there for 
I think two years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, there is, um, if we go back a little bit to Armenia, you have uh, forwarded this uh, picture to me, uh, Ilin, about the uh, 7,500 years Armenian Stonehenge. What is the uh, relation to our topic tonight here about Noah Sark? Uh, not very, but uh, uh, it's because uh, this film has been going around in circles and, and uh, uh, one archaeologist uh, speculated if this is uh, the, uh, the place where they settled the first time and came down from the mountain after the ark and built this place. Mm -hmm. Because this Uktasar inscription we shot uh, earlier is up on the mountain very close to this place. Mm. But we have no evidence of that, it's no clue, nothing, nothing at all. But now there will be some uh, research there. Uh, two um, groups are going to start digging there very soon and see what is this place. But they don't know if it's the if it's astronomical. How old are these stones? Uh, they know nothing about this place, but it has been used for graves, like I said earlier. Surat's career is the name, or Karahunch mm -hmm. in Armenia. Okay. So um, they cannot use this place as proof that the ark landed close by here. They have nothing to do with it. Hmm. Okay. Is this the only research that uh, was done around on uh, especially this location, the Armenian Stonehenge? Stonehenge, yeah. Is this the only... Yeah. Research? What? Is, is this yeah, the only... Yeah, I, I think... Yeah. I think in the, the, the latest film I saw, these archaeologists, they, they uh, went here and looked at this uh, and... Um, they read some books about it, but it's only speculation that Noah had anything to do with this. Uh, it's pure speculation. Okay. No. All right. Jonathan, uh, could you do an explanation about this map here? What do we have here? Uh, what we have here, actually, is um, uh, you'll see Mount Ararat itself at the top of the picture, mm. uh, toward the right, uh, and then to, toward the left of the picture at the top, you'll see anchor stones. Now, this is the route that the ark took it, on its way to, to the landing place. It's a dotted line in that uh, a mini circle. That, that is the location. Around this, you'll find um, place names. These are all place names related to the ark. And uh, the place of eight, for example, is at the top there. The Valley of Eight, the Village of Eight. Uh, then as you come if closer to the landing place along that dotted curved line, you'll see that where the oars were reversed. Now, mm. I'm not saying that Noah's Ark had oars, rowing boats, but the fact is what this is trying to say is this is where the boat stood down. You, you put your oars backward and you, you slow down a boat if, you, if you're uh, oaring or if you're rowing. Hmm. So all of these are the, the are places that have names to do with the sacrifice of the animal, as uh, the, the the giving the rainbow. All these happened at, as the ark was coming to land. Uh, these are place names which are in that whole area. The, these all relate to Noah's ark. All the place names that okay. are used today. These same names are used today. And you ask the people, how old are these? And they say, well, these were here. With them. As, as long as history goes, these names have been. All right. Okay. I understand that there has been an expedition which was led by um, a famous Seventh-day Adventist, a researcher and theologian. And the expedition concluded that there were only rocks have you done any yeah. r research on this? Yes, yes. Now, saying that they they had they looked at the rocks and they oh this is only rocks, but um, if we if we know the history of our own world, before the flood, all the trees uh, had no growth rings. Trees 
to have growth rings. Every new season, uh, the tree grows a bit, bit more. Then, it's, then it slows down in winter time, mm -hmm. and then it grows again. And so this is why rings of trees. And by measuring the rings, you can see the tree can be very old uh, or very young. And then before the flood, it was different. There was no seasons, no winter, no summer, hot and cold. Everything was like a spring, like loveliness all year round. Mm. And so the trees were growing all the time. There was no stopping and starting, no rings. And it's interesting that uh, Sister Ellen G. White in Patriarchs and Prophets, trees far surpassed in size, beauty, and perfect proportion. Any now to be found. Their wood was of fine grain and hard substance, closely resembling stone mm. and hardly less mm. enduring. Mm -hmm. So something, no growth rings, it was like stone. When it petrified, you would not expect to see rings in the wood. Mm. And we do find rings in the wood, like you would if these were uh, these were trees that were living today. Mm. And so that actually is uh, evidence that um, uh, the unusual stone uh, with no growth rings be interpreted. And mm. by the way, Vanderman's uh, expedition was there too. And all they, they didn't really do things up. Archaeologically, they blasting a hole in the side of it to see what comes out. That's not good archaeological practice. All right. And out comes petrified wood. Well, petrified wood has no growth rings in it if it's pre-flood. Hmm. Well, I find it as this is a very important detail, the difference between the pre-flood wood and, and the wood that we have today. Do you have your, what is your view on this, Ilin? Uh, nothing else, and I read the same thing. So, uh, yeah, yes, okay. But I think you can find the the, the it contains more carbon or something mm. when you measure it. Okay, the pre-flood wood. You're thinking about yeah. Uh, every yeah. every organ is uh, everything mm. that you that has been some uh, mm. living organism has more carbon in it. And this picture that we're showing here, Jonathan, is that is that a picture of a piece of petrified wood that you have from Noah's Ark? Yes, that's that's correct. That's mm. that's petrified wood from Noah's Ark. Mm. Okay. Well, how how is it possible that exactly this piece of information and these very important details, which adds up to the whole picture, that this must be the location and this must be the remains of Noah's Ark, you don't really see it in many other researches around the world. Why leave this very important piece of evidence out of the research? This is my, uh, my question. In the petrified wood? Yes. This is a very important piece of evidence. Yes, it is. It, it shows that this object, what we're looking at, mm. uh, it was once matter. It was one made of uh, it's growing trees. It was once uh, alive mm. and uh, it was shaped into a boat. It mm. was held with metal rivets. Uh, it was only man made. Landed in the location the mm. that the Bible says. It's the right length, it's the right width. And, and uh, mm. the radar showed that there were three decks. Hmm. But the two top decks were, had collapsed upon the, with the weight of all the, the mud and rubble on top hmm. that came down from the mountain onto it. Uh, it that collapsed, that press, put pressure on the top deck and the middle deck, so they collapsed onto the bottom deck. Hmm. But the radar still was there that there were three decks. Hmm. And okay. a passage, so, so the whole thing is, it, it's, fit to every detail that the book of Genesis tells us to expect. Hmm. Ellen, I understand from the next slide here that uh, 
William Shi believes it's it is ancient graves after important persons like like Shem. Where are we right now in Armenia, and what is the background of this? Sir, I, I, it's coming here. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same place that we saw. It's uh, Karahun, Shoshua's career. Mm. Uh, well, he was a very famous archaeologist, and uh, he looked around also for all the clues of Noah and his family. And uh, he was a specialist in petroglyphs, and uh, he, he found a lot of petroglyphs up here, he said. And uh, he also found the name of Shen, uh, mm -hmm. he said. I, uh, well, I'm not sure uh, exactly uh, where he found it. I think he mentioned one stone up there. But he said it was a marker, and he believed that this could be the, the grave of Shen. Mm -hmm. And it's not unlikely, because uh, more people have been buried there afterwards also, though. But there was a very, very big uh, grave in the middle of all these stones uh, in, uh, that is all around in mm. a circle. Okay. Is this related to this next image? Yeah, it's from the same place. Yeah. Mm. But of course they don't know. And uh, but they will start uh, digging, uh, to dig there now. So maybe they find something, I don't know. That will be interesting. Okay. Because we know from, uh, from uh, other sources and the Bible that Shem lived up in this area. Um, so it might be. But we have to find more clues to, to be sure. But some people say it's an uh, astronomical place. That's what we saw in the last uh, film uh, mm. from a philologist that wants Noah's Ark to be up there. But there is no evidence of that. Mm. And uh, the holes in the stones, uh, I, I was looking up in Armenia to find stones with holes in it. And I saw a lot of stones with holes in it. Also stones that you were treading on. And they say they used it, you know, to drag the stones from one place to another. So we really don't know hmm. more than that. Okay. In your research, uh, Jonathan, have you found any other similar boat shapes on Mount Ararat or the Urura uh, kingdom? Well, there are people who have made claims that the, uh, there are other boat shapes and so that uh, the one that Ron Wyatt found is not not unique, that there are others but very much like it. So let's make a quick uh, a quick visit onto Mount Ararat, and you will find that uh, there are no real boat shapes at all. Hmm. Matter of fact, uh, not one. You take aerial photographs, you can look at it, and the verdict is there's no real boat shapes at all. But there is a picture hanging on a man's wall that pretends to show a boat shape. And the it says that this was touched up by hand with pen and ink to make it look like a boat shape. Hmm. But if you investigate the location, you'll find it does not have the special characteristics we've in the real site. Hmm. It's a forged photograph. Uh, and again, every year, every year it seems to get clearer as it gets, seems to get touched up more and more. So it's it's mm. deception. There's no boat shapes on Mount Ararat. Mm. Mm. Is is this the picture you're talking about? This is the image. No, no, no. This is this is and this is different. This is about mud flowing around an obstruction. Okay. But I, we can explain this. Okay. Yeah. Please, please go ahead. I think I I mixed a little bit the images here. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Because a claim has been made that the boat shape that we are claiming is, is the uh, remains of Noah's Ark. Uh, somebody has said that it was caused by float around an obstruction. Mm. Now, if this shape was formed naturally, the mud flow would hit the obstruction at the top and pile up behind it and then move outward in a light bulb shape around the obstruction, hmm. like the picture hmm. on the right. And the lower portion of the mud flow would then carry the, the sharp end where the flow comes together again, and the upstream end would remain as the lower portion, and, and the, the pointed portion would be at the bottom. That's, that's a natural way of how it happens. Hmm. But now, 
our boat shape in Turkey, the left picture, is not natural, it's man-made. The picture on shows how nature does it, unless, of course, mud flows uphill. Hmm. Hmm. And our answer to the critic hmm. is stop holding the picture upside down. The sharp right. <laughs> end is up and the rounded end is downhill. Okay. And so that clearly shows the fallacy of the argument that the mm. shape is due to mud flowing around and it's not. Mm. Well, thank you for pointing uh, this out to, uh, to our viewers uh, as well here. So that's a very important point to differentiate between a nature made, and as you mentioned, uh, in regards to, uh, to mud flowing uh, around it. And... Uh, well, there is another uh, image which uh, we have here, and I would like to ask you to explain why does it largely have the appearance of rock and sand? Yes. Well, why does it ha have the appearance of rock and sand? Hmm. Because the, uh, the petrified wood, Jackie, uh, as we mentioned, the appearance of the rock is due to the fact that there's no growth rings. It's pre-flood timber. Noah mm. built it before the flood. He didn't build it after the flood. Mm. He built it before the flood. But there, there are, uh, with the weather, the, the weather uh, beating against it, all the, the, the snow and, and rain and hail beating against it year mm. after year, year mm. after year, when the sides get exposed as, as they are here, here, you, you can see the upright timber uh, mm. vertically from, at regular intervals. Now, yeah. once this was exposed by, by scraping the mud, mud away from the structure, it was now, now open to all the attacks of uh, snow and, and storms and rain and so on. And this can make uh, this type of wood uh, start breaking up. And when it starts break of course well sand actually comes from rock hmm. so wood can turn to stone and then sand can come from this as the elements beat against it hmm. have you noticed the same formation uh, Elin, when you have done your research around the this location yes and of course also there is a lot of mud and lava as mentioned earlier that hmm. is surrounding the remains you don't mm. see it clearly all the petrified wood so that's why we hope there will be a digging permission so we can find more mm. petrified wood mm. all right there is a quotation here from spirit of prophecy from a writer ellen g white the trees far surpassed in size beauty and perfect proportions and now to be found any now to be found their wood was a fine grain and hard substance closely resembling stone and hardly less enduring. And I just want to point this, uh, uh, Jonathan, before I'm uh, going to ask you the next question. Uh, could you also please uh, tell us when was this quotation written? How many years ago? Oh, that quotation would be written uh, in the late 1800s. In the late 1800s. And how much knowledge was in the late 1800s about the location of Noah's Ark? Nothing, n nothing at all, because everything had been lost for about, well, it was in the uh, early 1800s that uh, uh, people were in questions, where is the Ark? Where mm. is it? Mm. Uh, because the, the history uh, of a regular visits from everywhere had mm. uh, stopped. The, the visits had stopped occurring. And mm. so there was a vacuum for a while where, where knowledge was having been lost was not yet restored. Mm. But and the, and the, the, the archaeological archaeological research had not archaeological research had not resumed. So the writer here, Lange White, she she had no other way to know about this than from heavenly inspiration. But from inspiration. Yes. That's correct, and also she was where the how the other because she described the the arc of hills, which it, it uh, floated at the end of the flood. Okay, 
All right. Well, there is another claim. I don't know if you can uh, f fill in on this, uh, Eileen, if you have any information or, or Jonathan, that uh, the Ark was actually built by Constantine in the fourth uh, centuries, as it is being shown here on the slide. Is there any information or anything that indicates that uh, Constantine made a copy of the Ark in the fourth century and this is what we are looking at today in turkey no uh whoever made that statement actually has, has not done their study very well mm. now in the remains of the ark that we have up in turkey we have aluminium and we have titanium mm -hmm. these are found in the remains of the ark and these metals were not in use in the fourth century when constantine was alive aluminium and titanium were not used anywhere by any of the people alive at that time they did not have that technology to use it hmm. but isn't that very interesting that titanium was found at the location of noah Sarek? so how is it possible that you find metals which are today very precious titanium it's it's probably one of the strongest metal and this is we're talking about a pre-flood construction about four thousand plus years old right mm -hmm. Yes, we are. We most certainly are, and uh, I think the evidence for pre-flood technology is fascinating. Mm. Uh, so items are being found down in ball mines, buried with the with the forests that were uh, that were destroyed at the time of Noah's flood, and have sent to coal, and right underneath us. And maybe we could have a whole a whole program on this mm. subject. It's very mm. fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, show that they would manufacturing things that today in the 21st century have been manufactured for the first time since then hmm. yes please it's go amazing. ahead Eli. yeah no i i i just, just say it's amazing and hmm. we also know that the first city may be built after the flood on the other side of our at some wood it's called today um they found a lot of uh, metal uh, or what you call it in English, you know, where you um, melted metals and put together. So they try to continue this uh, that they did before the flood, that try to continue it afterwards, but it was not so easy to find all these metals. Hmm. But it's, I, yes, it's so true, true what you said. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think you're referring to the uh, method of casting different metals, and then they're building Yes, metal. yes, they found yes. this. That, okay. that that's what they did in that city hmm. and, and just because yeah. you mentioned before jonathan there is an, uh, was another question from uh, one of our viewers and if you are watching uh, this episode as well we will take that question about the tablet uh, we, we just need to make a special episode about the discoveries that have been made and, and some of them are being kept secret and we just need to gather more information uh, about uh, and and to make a special episode uh, on this uh, as well. Well, it I would just... make a very interesting subject, and because a lot of things are being found, mm. and uh, uh, when I mentioned about that tablet that had been found down in the coal mine, uh, I, I did not mention also that uh, uh, other tablets have been found, not just that one. Mm. Okay. Well, I think you're making uh, our viewers very uh, excited mm -hmm. for, for that episode because that's, uh, that's really sound science fiction, uh, I believe, for, for many people. But uh, we'll, get back, uh, we'll get back to that. I just want to mention one of the last questions I have here is that another claim is that uh, the uh, formation of, of Noah's Ark here, we're talking about there's this uh, theory that uh, this was an ancient fortress, uh, perhaps built by the Mongol conqueror Tamerlane in, in the 1300s. Do we have a, any well, evidence to support this? Any more evidence? Uh, a very interesting question, Michael. Now, if we, if we see where the, where the shape is, it's mm. downhill. I mean, the mountains are, are 7,000 feet high, as a and uh, yeah, or as as uh, Eva mentioned, seven thousand feet high, and the the arc our arc is six thousand feet high. So it's down the mountain from the top. In other words, the top looks over it. Now, 
it doesn't take a lot of intelligence to recognize that nobody in his right mind would have built a fortress on a mountain valley surrounded higher than that. Enemies would only have to stand upon the, the hills above and shoot down upon them and they'd be sitting ducks. So yeah. it doesn't make <laughs> sense that this would be a fortress. Where hmm. Okay, well, that I guess that answer that uh, that theory pretty uh, pretty well. What about this other claim here, uh, Jonathan, that this could be a, a remains a Roman galleon or a Viking ship? That's... Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, it's far <laughs> too big to be a Roman galleon or to mm. be a Viking ship. Andly, our is in a continental heartland hundreds of miles from the Mediterranean Sea. Hmm. It's also 6,300 feet or 2,000 uh, above sea level on the mountains. Hmm. And uh, we might estimate its weight as about 30,000 tons. So certainly you would not get it up there on your back. Mm -hmm. For the ship to have got there, all that time intervening land needed to be water uh, in, in historical times. Mm. Now, in Roman times or Viking times, uh, all of that area of land, hundreds of miles of land away from the sea be, where it's found, would have to be underwater for it to get there. Mm. And so there's no need to invent a, a, a different kind of but the obvious candidate is Noah's Ark that came mm. at when the world was covered by water. But so uh, but people try to get out of the Noah's Ark acceptance, and so they make up mm. all these stories. Well, just to mention one thing about this uh, claim here, this theory. If, if let's say that this was a Roman galleon or Viking ship, wouldn't that be only possible if there was a flood? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, you must invent another it, flood. You you need a flood to have that ship over there, as you mentioned, because nobody would care that up, not even the Romans and the Vikings. No. All right. Okay. Well, um, I hope that we have covered all, uh, at least what we could find so far, uh, the different theories, and I hope for our viewers that uh, we have covered at least some of the evidence uh, that it's available to us today. The much evident, much more evidence is it's coming uh, in the near future uh, in regards to especially the location of uh, Noah Sark. Because once again, to, to wrap up uh, Jonathan and Nilin, uh, just to summarize, it seems that the main issue here, if we look among Christians, is that there is a, a great confusion about understanding the right location, just to summarize, of where to actually look for Noah's Ark. Yeah, why don't we just take the Bible as it says, and so the Bible says it landed in the mountains of Ararat. Now, the word Ararat is Aratu. Mm. Uh, it did not land on a mountain, it landed in the mountains. Mm. And then th those mountains, uh, the old kingdom of Ararat is in Turkey. Simple as that. Mm. Not Mount Ararat in the same area hmm. and there is a lot of research you have done and once again if you could just mention some of your books and the website our viewers could go in and, and have a look and purchase some of your books if anyone is interested to to read your books and and to have your research okay the website is before us dot hmm. com hmm. before us dot com okay. all one word all right and books such as um, uh, I, I've, I've published three books on the flood, uh, The World Before the Flood, The World During the Flood, and The World After the Flood. And those three books, are, uh, the first book is called The Killing of Paris Planet. Mm -hmm. The second one goes with it is called Surprise Witness. Mm -hmm. And the third one is The Corpse came back I, I hope the the titles are interesting enough but the they they tell of discoveries before the flood during the flood and since the flood mm. all right ellen did you have any comments on this not only that i have met a lot of christians also going up there to 
the Ararat Volcano Mountain, and I talk with a lot of people about all this research for where is the ark, and I think, um, sad to say, there is a lot of researchers that want to find the ark themselves. They don't mm -hmm. want it to be found because they want to find it, and they are collecting a lot of money from organizations in the United States and other places, and they like to do the research, adventurers, and uh, uh, that's not so good. Mm. So um, I think we have to be honest, you know, to see and uh, really seek what does God want it to be found? And uh, is that mm. why it has been found now? Mm. So we can use that to show the people, show the world that mm. there has been a flood. Mm. Yeah. And God will judge the world again mm. one day. Another way. Quite right. And just one th one thing we could add to that, and that is, the Turkish government has accepted this as as Noah's Ark. They even have a road sign pointing up to it with the name Nuhan Gemisi. That that means Noah's Be. Mm. And they've built a visitor centre up there and declared that whole area an international historical park. Mm. And thank you, Ellen, mm. for bringing this uh, end time perspective to the findings of Noah's Ark. And this is a question that I've asked you before, Jonathan, but I like, I like to ask you again, and, and Elisa, Ellen as well. Do you really believe that the world as, as such, the world in large, will ever accept the findings of Noah's Ark and the other findings? No. No, I no, won't believe so, because they they do not want to accept that the Bible is true because the Bible has a claim on their lives and that they want to live their own lives and they don't want a God to tell them what to do, mm. even though he loves them and knows what's best for them. That was, a, that was a clear no. So the real reason is not really missing evidence about Noah Sorek. That's, that's not the case here. Right? Because... I think... Uh... I, I think also there is a very few. That's the main that Jonathan was talking about now is the main people out there. But uh, why he continue and why I continue and many other continue is because we have seen that this can change people's lives. Mm. And I remember once I showed it to, to some people, uh, all the picture and everything, and they said to me, oh, so God is there. There is something. Mm to it and God exists and they said mm. and the next question was what shall I do about it? Mm. So I think we have to look for the few. Mm. Yes, yes. You, you, Elaine is quite quite right. And and I've had the same results at the I had skeptics come into meetings and saying nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. At, at the end of the hour meeting they've walked out and said, This has changed my life. Wow. Wow. Mm. Praise God, that's, uh, that's amazing. So we hope for our viewers, and this is a challenge to our viewer. Now it's your choice to decide what you will build your life upon. If you're expecting that the secular world will ever accept and there will be a majority of uh, scientists and archaeologists that will accept that this is Noah's Ark, as we have just mentioned here, this will never happen. So thank you for uh, watching and thank you, Elin for uh, taking time it's it's late for you here in denmark and uh, thank you jonathan for being part of this uh, special episode and next time we will continue with uh, our interviews and our webcast uh, based on uh, jonathan's books in regards to these subjects i think there is much more to uh, show about Noah's Ark. There is a lot of evidence, but we will go ahead also continue with uh, some of uh, the other subjects which you have uh, researched. And we hope to have you again with us, Eileen, at a later point again. So thank you for being part of this uh, conversation, this webcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.